Hello. Hi. This is the stuff that crafters never want you to see. Yeah. <laughs> We're a little embarrassed about this one, but. Here it is. This is yeah. typically how our bookshelf ends up looking. We don't have a craft room. Uh, we craft usually on our floor right here. And as we're working, you know we make a lot of crafts, <laughs> we tend to make a mess. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's that uncommon that like most people's spaces end up looking like this. But today we're gonna tackle this issue and try to make it more convenient for us to find certain craft supplies and make it more visually pleasing. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna show you 10 hacks to spring clean your craft supplies. Let's get started. So we're gonna start by taking everything off the bookshelf, grouping like things together, and also figuring out which craft supplies we wanna donate. Here we go. Oh. Bracelets. <laughs> Did you ever do this as a kid? Nope. I did. So we have a pile of a lot of our miscellaneous crafts. Uh, we are going to now go through them and donate them. A lot of times we have a hard time letting go of things, but we started donating to schools, senior centers, hospitals, and they are so appreciated to have these materials. And it's nice that these can have a second life. We hold on to everything, but it's time to declutter a little bit. I need these brushes. No, you don't. No, you these. don't! I need them! No. And we use these color pencils a lot, so we're gonna get rid of some of the multiples, but we're gonna keep a lot of them. We're just going to group them in a different way. Yeah, I, I, I have a trick. If it's not sharpened, let's donate it. <laughs> I'll be back, I'm going to the senior center. <laughs> So this is something that we like to do, and we actually do it seasonally or for special holidays, is we change out our backing of our bookshelf with different fabric, mm -hmm. um, depending on the season or the holiday. Yeah, this is a bookshelf that the actual back comes off, so it's really easy to do. We just wrap the fabric and then staple it back right onto the shelf. Yes, yeah, so today we're actually creating a fake bookshelf backing, and we're gonna put this up right in a shelf here to hide any kind of miscellaneous craft supplies that we don't use a lot or things that we don't want people to see. We cut a piece of foam board to size of our shelf, and now we are going to wrap it in the same fabric that we have the bookshelf backed in. Yep, and we're not doing anything fancy here. No. We're just gonna tape the fabric to the back. If you don't have a bookshelf where the back comes off, you could actually make backings for each shelf so you could have the same look. So this is a handful of stuff that we only use seasonally or stuff that we don't use that often. We're just gonna throw it up there and cover it up. We use a lot of embroidery thread in a lot of our projects, but they always end up tangled, a mess. I know. We end up like rebuying some because I just I know, don't want to like because we don't want to untangle yeah. it and then you end up with a small piece, you have to tie it together, then you have a knot in the middle of your project. So today we're going to be wrapping our embroidery thread around clothespins to hopefully keep it nice and organized and clean. We're going to start by taking the end of our embroidery thread here and I'm just going to hold it around the teeth and I'm just going to start wrapping. Yo, yo, yo. I wrap my embroidery thread. Oh, lost it. <laughs> this is why I'm a crafter and not a rapper. Yo, yo, yo. Round and around the thread goes where it's gonna stop. Nobody knows. That was good. That was good. Very nursery rhymey. Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. And then right there at the end, I'm gonna latch it off right in the middle of the clothespin. And then uh, now I'll know where my embroidery thread starts and it'll be super easy to access. Yeah. And now we're gonna pop these in a clear jar. This way we can see what we have or see what we need to get. Yeah, I and mean, they're so pretty just as is. Having them in a clear jar is just visually pleasing. As you can see, our jar is only half full. We are gonna take a piece of vellum paper and stick it right in the middle. And that way we can add other things to the jar while keeping things separated, using the jar more efficiently. And this way too, if you get tired of looking at the same stuff, you can just turn the jar around and you can look at something else. And we have a few other jars here that we need to organize and kind of shift around. And we're gonna be adding a piece of vellum to each of them. Yeah, what if we put, yeah, beads in there? Cute, cute. 
All right. And then this is all set. Uh, we like to group things together, like things together, so this way we can put our stamps in the front and then put our stamped hats in the back. And if we ever wanna go stamping, we just grab this jar and we're good to go. We save so much space, we have an extra jar for something else. Maybe our washi tape? Okay. Storing things in a box is always a great idea, but after a while, things start to get really hard to find things, and you end up throwing everything in, and it just becomes really unorganized. We are going to be using a divider that we found in a box of candles, but a six pack would work too. And this way we can just keep things more sectioned and then it'll be easier to find and easier to clean as we go. So in this box, we have a lot of our glitter and embossing tools and some, some, some alcohol punches. Ink, some punches. Yes. There's a lot in this box. There is. All right, a fun little hack too that we like to use is a tension rod. We get them cheap at our dollar store. We have a few here in Queens. Um, we're gonna put this up on our bookshelf and actually add some S hooks so that we can hang some of our favorite scissors. Now it's time for our paint. Oh my gosh. We have so much paint. So much paint. That it's a paint in our butt. <laughs> that feels good. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So one little hack that we have for this is to turn your paint bottles upside down and we're actually gonna store them so that we can easily access our paint colors. Yeah, and the great thing about having these in bins is when we're working on a project, we can actually just pull them right off the shelf and put them on the table. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna color coordinate these to make it look pretty. We have a lot of different bottles of product on our bookshelf and we have to stare at it all the time. So we want a nice cohesive look and for it to look cute. So we're gonna use a bit of plaid duct tape to actually cover up the back of the bottle mm -hmm. and to leave the front label exposed. This way we will know what it still is. We're going to display these with the back facing out and when we need to know what we're looking for, we can just turn it around and check. We already organized all our paint by color and we're gonna gather up our colored pencils and put them in groups of color. This way it's more visually appealing and they're easy to access. We sorted through our craft supplies and we gathered like items. We're gonna put them into boxes. This will keep everything together and to make things less cluttered on the bookshelf. All right, it's done. Wow. It was I... a labor of love, but I think it was worth it. We feel so much better now. It always yeah. feels good to purge, start fresh, and also I feel better kind of passing along some of our unused craft supplies. A hundred percent. Not only is this functional now, it actually looks really nice. And since this is in our living room and we have to look at it all the time, we want it to look nice. Yeah. Let us know if you have any fun craft hacks that you want to share with everyone. Put it in a comment below, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Happy crafting! Bye!